רבים מחפש אחרייך ובכל מקום אני שואל עלייך שהלכת את המער שמיד את חוזרת Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael Sano, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the 12 Cities in Israel podcast, the only positive podcast about the food, the culture, and the people of Israel. We're here to tell you about all, all the great things this big little country has to offer. Um, listen, if this is your first time watching the video version of this podcast please 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 don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're always in the loop and you always know when we have a brand new fresh episode out um also if you'd like to take us with you on your way to the gym or to work or to wherever you're going to um you can find the audio version of this podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Spotify. And if you'd like to help support this podcast, please feel free to become a patron of the show by heading on over to our Patreon page, www.patreon.com forward slash 12 cities in Israel, the number one, two cities in Israel and set up a monthly donation. We would appreciate it. And every donation allows us to continue to bring you this awesome show. Um, all right. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And welcome to episode 33. Whoa. Um, yeah. Happy new year. Um, that's one of the things that I'm going to be talking about in the beginning. I'm also going to be talking about some serious stuff. Um, and I'm also going to be talking to you about some great stuff. Um, I'm going to be telling you about what's going on in February and before we do all that, um, I need to give a couple of shout outs. Um, the first one goes to our sponsor, Neviot Plus. Neviot Plus flavored water, nature at its best taste. Neviot Plus delivers you with a true combination of health and pleasure. It is based on Neviot natural mineral water, one of its kind in Israel. It's enhanced with five, that's true, five B group vitamins. It's naturally sweetened. It is low in calories, only 35 to 40 calories per eight fluid ounces. There are no preservatives, no color additives, and it is available in delicious indulging flavors like apple, grape, and peach, which we have here. If you're in Israel, you should be drinking Neviot. For more information, please check out their website at www.neviotglobal.com forward slash en forward slash home. That's www.neviotglobal.com forward slash en forward slash home if you want to get this delivered to your home in canada or north america head on over to our next sponsor and they are makolet online makolet online's main goal is to make israeli groceries and judaic products affordable and available to everyone in the usa and canada their online store carries items that are unavailable in most places in North America, things like Israeli chocolates, mm, frozen borekas, and the Neviat water that we have here today. At Makolet Online, you will find your favorite Israeli group uh, groups, your favorite Israeli goods, or simply enjoy brand new flavors. All of their products are kosher and most are manufactured in Israel. If you want the taste of Israel delivered to your home, visit www. And as an added bonus, use the coupon code 12 cities in Israel, the number one, two cities in Israel, uh, when you check out and they will give you 15% off your entire order. So, um, I actually, and this is important. I just got a uh, hundred dollar gift card for Hanukkah. Um, and to all of you, I did a Hanukkah episode, but Hanukkah Sameach, um, if, if you missed, if you missed it, go back, check it out. Um, and yeah, so happy new year folks. Um, 
Now, as most of you know, most of you who follow us, we do a little segment right now called Chamesh Bachamesh. And that is our Ulpan segment. And that is five in five. And we do we do five words in about five minutes. And I think it's going to be fun. I'm staying on topic here, of course, as usual. Um, and we're going to start with um, some words that deal with the new year. Um, I know that uh, I, it took me a second and then I was like, uh, oh my gosh, why don't I just do these words? So here we go. Are you ready? Our first one is Shana. What does Shana mean? Shana means year, year. So there you go. Year. What year is it? Mashana. Um, I think that's what you would say. Mashana. And that is our first one. Our first one is year. What is our next one? Oh, our next one is month. Chodesh. Chodesh means month. So we have year, shana. We have chodesh, which is month. Um, and our next one, most of you are actually, you probably know some of these in association with other words. Um, but I'm going to give you the next one, and that is yom. Yom means date. So think about it. Think about um, the, the, the Hebrew words that you do know that actually already deal with the Hebrew calendar. So Rosh Hashanah, head of the year. So Shana is year. We have um, Chodesh, which I don't know um, where. Anyways, I'm moving on. Um, and then we have Yom, Yom Kippur. Uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. Now our next one, I, I actually had to look this one up and I want to, I need to look at the, at the pronunciation of it. Cause I want to make sure I get it absolutely right. And it is Ta-a-rik. Ta-a-rik. Now what does Ta-a-rik mean? Ta-a-rik means date. Mahataraik. So maha being the, ma being what. So maha, what is the ta'arik, date. So ta'arik is date. That's a new one I learned, which I'm super duper psyched about. Um, And now you learned it too. And our final one. And I had to look this one up too because I, I, I've I never had to use it. Um, and it is Lucha Shana. So Lucha Shana. And Lucha Shana is, are you ready? Calendar. So I've, I've never, I don't know. It's not that I've never looked at a calendar. I've use calendars while I was in Israel all the time. I never wondered though, what, what do you call it? And, and it's funny because, uh, my Hebrew is at a point now where I'm, uh, I'm really, um, starting to exercise it. I'm actually knocking the rust off of the old part of it. And I'm, I'm really trying to get into the meat, all of those fun little words, um, like calendar and, date words that i don't know if we have shared team which means uh where is the bathroom um that's important where is the calendar not so much but so that's it chamesh bachamesh thank you thank you thank you everyone learned some brand new words um i'm going to talk a little bit about new years in israel give me one second peter madera lachayim this is, I need a drink of coffee, so. Mm. All right, so, so, uh, so someone was talking to me, I think it was yesterday, it might have been the day before, but they were talking to me about 
New Year's in Israel. And it was funny because if you think about it, if you really, really think about it, we don't have too many holidays that transfer, that transverse the globe. Is that the right word? I don't know. Um, but that travel the globe. We don't have many holidays that are celebrated in the United States, in Europe, in the Middle East, and in Asia. All right. So there are very few. We all have our own, you know, Christmas is in the Western world. But also, it, it, it's becoming more of a worldwide, I hate to say this, secular uh, uh, holiday. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention is, and I learned this in, what was it? I learned this in one of my Jewish studies programs. I was, I was curious about it. Why do, why do kids get presents on Hanukkah? Where did that come from? And it came from in America. It is such a tradition to give presents around Christmas time that all of the, <laughs> I, I, I asked, are you serious about this? And, and my professor said, yes. And all of the Jewish kids, we weren't feeling included. So we bugged our parents and they rabbis came around and said, all right, all right, all right, give them, give them presents, give them eight presents, but they can't be big. <laughs> right. So, so that is why Hanukkah gift giving occurs now in uh, the United States and even in Israel, I found out. Um, I had heard before and spoke to people who said, well, that's just an American thing, but apparently it's not. So anyways, moving on. What I wanted to say was I was speaking to someone and they said Chag Sylvester and I, I, I'd never heard about it. And apparently Sylvester is this holiday that occurs on the 31st. And according to my friend, he said it's celebrated in Israel. So I went and I did a little bit of research because I, I, I'd never heard of it. And uh, so, yes and no. So Sylvester is St. Sylvester's Day which there right, sh should tell you that the majority of Israelis are probably not going to celebrate it. And then apparently there is some disconsent, discontent, discontent, yes, among the Russian Jews who emigrated to Israel about Sylvester, uh, about St. Sylvester's Day, or whatever, however you want to call it, Sylvester. Um, because, and I don't know, I'm, this is secondhand knowledge, so I will be the first to correct myself. Um, but apparently Pope, it's named after Pope Sylvester and Pope Sylvester was, uh, I guess he was kind of anti-Semitic. Um, so it's frowned upon in the Jewish community. I don't know if it's frowned upon in the Jew, see, because a lot of the Russian Jews who came and emigrated to Israel were, um, secular. They came in the 70s, uh, no, 80s. They came in the 80s and the 90s uh, around the fall, uh, before, right before the fall of the Iron Curtain and after, of course. Um, and yeah, so since it's such a seen as an anti-Semitic, since he was an anti-Semite, according to the source that I read, um, it's frowned upon. Didn't know that. So be careful what you say and when you say it. Um, don't be afraid, but be careful. Um, all right, one more, because I'm going to use this to launch into something that I have to talk about, which I'm not super duper excited to talk about. And I want to get, you You know what they say, bad news first, then the good news. I'm going to do my bad news, I guess. So hold on. It's not really bad news. I mean, it is news, if you know. Uh, so, um, for those of you who don't know, there was an attack on the Jewish community in Monsey. Um, I live on one side of the Hudson River, north of New York City. Monsey is on the other side. Um, what? And it's a uh, it's a Hasidic community. Um, it's an Orthodox community. It's a very tight knit community. Um, and a man, uh, went in there 
um, and stabbed five people and injured a number of others. And a table was thrown at him, and he uh, he was, you know, basically ejected from the premises. He he fled, and then went next door to another synagogue and tried to get in there, but they had barricaded themselves in. Um, now I went to City College of New York, down in New York City. Um, traveled in every day, and one of my dearest friends. Uh, two of them, actually, uh, but the one that I spoke to, one of my dearest friends, she's kind of like a little uh, sister to me, um, Hendel. Uh, her family is from there. I spoke to her. Her family's fine. They're safe. Um, but I have a degree of removal, and that's that's uncomfortable. Um, so that they so so we before I get into that. There was another attack in Jersey City. Um, It seemed random, but two armed uh, gunmen went in and shot up a kosher supermarket. And uh, it, like I said, it seemed random, and then it turned out that it wasn't, that it was a planned attack. And... Then there was another attack that I uh, saw a video of, um, of a group of teens striking a uh, Orthodox man in Crown Heights with a fold-up beach chair. Um, And then taking it, hitting him again, punching him, all kinds of stuff. Uh, A lot of... A lot of physical violence. Now, all of that violence, while it does affect me because I am a member of the Jewish community at large, Um, but the one in Monsi affected me greatly, not because I'm a part of that community, but because I have people who are such close friends that I consider them family. Um the kind of people that if you picked up the phone and called me in the middle of the night, I would get in my car to come help you. Um, I know, knowing the kind of person I am, I, please don't call me anyone. <laughs> but uh, ju- I, I would probably do it for just about anyone. But but uh, this, yeah, this is someone that I, I'm, I care for a lot. Uh, very close friend. Um so I guess what I'm trying to say is normally I'm removed from it by, is it a mental barrier? Is it the same thing that we're all removed from when we see some kind of violence? And I'm not trying to get on a soapbox here. That's not what the purpose of 12 cities in Israel is, but I need to say something about what's going on. Um, keep you informed. And make you understand why it's important for me to be doing what I do. So, that is... With the new, with with the Monty thing, I'm no longer that mental barrier that I, that I can keep is removed immediately. These are people I know. You know, well, they, they're not specifically people I know, but someone I know is affected directly by that. This is someone that, that she or her husband sees every day, you know, maybe, I don't know. Um, but it's close. It's so close. Um, this is weird and I'm, I'm just going to say it. It's so close that when I went downstairs in my house, we have a uh, we had a Hanukkah in the window and a big blue and silver star of David for Hanukkah. That I didn't consider, and this is important. I didn't consider taking it out, but I asked the question: Is it safe to have it? Is it safe to have it in the window? Am I telling people to come and attack me and my family? Am I giving license? 
to someone who hates me and everything that I am, apparently, um, to do something like that. And it's scary because, and I was talking to my wife about it and, uh, it's fear and I'm not comfortable with fear, which is, it's funny because who is right. But I mean, I've always been the kind of person and I, and I don't mean this in a, yeah, Hey, kind of way. I mean it in a, I've always been the kind of person that if someone says, Hey, can you do that? I, hell yeah, I can do that. Do it twice. You know, never, never. Fear has been something that I've always had to live with in my life just because of things, just, uh, all kinds of things, being in the military, being, uh, the way, you know, certain events that occurred when I was a child, just, just things. Fear has always been something that I can control. Fear has always been something that I've been able to overcome. Not easily every time, but in the end have always been able to overcome. And this time it's not so easy. I will be able to, I mean, put in a position, absolutely. I will be able to, I know that. And why do I know that? Because I've done it before. Not because, um, you know, this cocksure, oh, yeah, super, you know, no, not because of that. Just because that's hopefully the type of individual I am at the, re- at the crucial moment, let's say, but I don't like dealing with fear. I don't like fearing for my family's safety. I don't like fearing for my safety. Honestly, the only time I've ever experienced this before was being in New York City on September 11th. Honestly. Um, There was one other time. I don't want to discuss that. Um, Anyone who knows me, if you listen to this or see it and you want to talk to me about it, I will. Um, But... I have that fear again. And here's what I have to say about it. And it's very important that I get this right. So I actually wrote something um, for the last night of Hanukkah on my, uh, on my Instagram on the 12 cities in Israel, Instagram. And I'm going to read it to you because I think it's important. I'm going to read it to you because not that I can't paraphrase again and not that I can't come up with the words again, but I think it's important, very, very, very important to put these words out, not just for me to help with my fear, but for anyone who's listening, who's also in the same boat that I am, listen to these words and know and, 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 and just absorb them. Okay. Um, what I wrote, I'm just going to read the whole thing. Hanukkah Sameach, happy Hanukkah to everyone on this final night of Hanukkah, please find hope In the miracle of this holiday, pray for everyone who suffered the attacks on our communities and try not to give in to fear. Let the strength of the Maccabees be your strength. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Give me one moment. So that's what I'd like. I'd like you to take the strength. I mean, the Maccabees were probably terrified. Absolutely terrified. They're going up against an empire. But they did it. We can do it too. Um, I don't know how to put it any other way. Uh, keep your chin up. If you need help, ask for it. And 
just take care of yourself. Um, all right. I am going to move. <laughs> so the, yeah, that's, that's the serious, uh, that's the serious I had to talk to. I'm going to move into the, uh, I'm going to move into the shout outs now, the second half of shout outs, because we are at the halfway point. Um, and thank you for those of you who stuck around to listen to that. Thank you very much. Um, all right. So our first shout out for this little break is to iConnect. iConnect, engagement with Israel that earns you rewards. iConnect is a website dedicated to teaching you more about Israel. It's also a social gaming platform where you can play, earn points, and receive cool prizes all for free. While you're there, you will connect with Israel by engaging with all of iConnect's numerous articles, games, quizzes, polls, and more. Now, why should you play? Because iConnect's unique platform introduces you to Israel in a fun, exciting, and most importantly, rewarding way, all while working towards giving you a once in a lifetime experience. So head on over to www.iconnect.co.il. That's www.iconnect.co.il and start playing now. Our next one is from Israel Phones. Israel Phones is the leading provider of communication devices for people traveling to Israel, and they offer SIM cards, mobile phone rentals, and MiFi devices, which are mobile Wi-Fi hotspots, and serve the connectivity needs of tour groups, synagogues, schools, community missions, study programs, and individuals visiting their family and friends, supplying you with all of the mobile phone equipment that you'll need on your next trip to Israel. And for those who've already used iConnect um, or Israel phones, sorry, for those who, <laughs> and for those who have already used Israel phones, they want to let you know that they're putting out brand new plans for Israel that give you a much better bang for your buck. You now get much more data at an affordable price with unlimited calls and texts in Israel and international calling to the USA included. For 30 gigabytes, it's only 29 bucks. For 50 gigabytes, it's only $39. And these plans are valid for 30 days. A 10% discount will be applied for stays over 90 days. With their new iConnect Israel rewards program, which is why I, I was thinking iConnect, um, you can get a $15 credit to cover the cost of the SIM card for just signing up. You can join iConnect Israel right now and start earning points towards great rewards. And also, because of watching this, Israel Phones will give you a free SIM card, which is a $15 value if you spend $30 or more on their site. All you have to do to get this deal is to use the coupon code 12 Cities in Israel, the number one, two Cities in Israel. All one word, no spaces. So if you want to get either of these deals, if you spend, I think, did I say that? If you spend $30 or more on the site, you will get that. Um, so if you want to use either of those uh, programs and get either of those deals, head on over to www.israelphones.com. That's www.israelphones.com. All right. Um, so I talked about the serious. I talked about, 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 um, I talked about the series. I talked about, um, the spate of anti-Semitic violence that has hit in New York lately. And I've also spoken, um, and it's not a new phenomena. Um, it's important to understand that these things move in cycles and let's just hope and pray that these people um, move on or learn at, at the best. They learn that um, these things don't go anywhere. Um, hold on just one sec. So, all right. One of the things that people and I, and and I do want to wrap up because I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about this. That's not what this podcast is about. 
But I do want to, but what this podcast about is something that can be used and should be used to combat this. Um, and I hate using that word combat because ideas aren't things that should be fought against. Ideas are things that people should, you know, yeah, some ideas are not help helpful. Um, that, I'm, I'm not doing this right. I'm doing it a horrible injustice. So I've read a couple of books and one of the books, um, recently, one of the books said, why everything that you do in a conversation with a person in an interaction with a person should work towards the best, um, work towards the best outcome for you and the other person. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do that. A lot of people have said stuff. Why don't you talk about the conflict? Why don't you talk about, um, why don't you talk about all of the discord that exists in politics? Why don't you talk about all of the problems that exists uh, problems that exist between the secular and the religious in Israel. I will discuss those things. Um, I'll discuss those things if they further the conversation toward a positive note. If they color the picture more fully. But proportionally. Color is actually interesting. I just popped into this. So if you use, so sometimes, sometimes I'll be editing this podcast, okay? And that window, if you're, if you're watching the video version, there's a window behind me and sometimes the sun's coming in and it brightens things out and it washes me out. So I have to go in and I have to saturate it a little bit to bring the colors out to bring my face out so it doesn't look like I'm a shadow sitting here. Now you can overcorrect and undercorrect. You can bring out the blues, you can bring out the reds and they distort the picture. They make the picture inaccurate. It's easy to make the picture ugly. It's easy to make the picture beautiful. If I saturate it in a certain way, I can really make make my eyes glow. Um, if I darken it enough or with lighting, I can make myself look sinister. I can do all these things. You can do these things with words as well. So one of the things that I was speaking to my wife about is that a lot of people don't understand. The, um, and I'm talking about Israel. Um, talking about, because I was saying, what am I trying to do with this show? And I'm trying to actually relate it to the, the first thing we were talking about, which was all the anti-Semitism. So it is really easy to do bad things to inhuman things. Ants. Ants aren't people. Ants don't think, ants don't love, ants don't uh, hug their kids. I'm, uh, they may, but I'm making that statement, okay? Um, I'm being kind of facetious, so it winds up on YouTube. Michael Sano hates ants. Um, but when you give license and you dehumanize something, uh, wh when you dehumanize something, you give license to any actions across a broader spectrum be them violent, be them horrible, uh, all kinds of really, really, really negative, negative things. What I'm trying to do here at 12 Cities in Israel is I am trying to reverse the propaganda. 
Okay, a lot of people. So there's an interesting word, and I'm going to use this word. And I actually have someone coming on the show that I'm going to be talking to about this. So there's a word called Hasbara. And it doesn't mean propaganda, but it, 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 um, in a good light, describing things in a good light. And at some point, I, I haven't yet, but I will be accused of Hasbara. So Hasbara has a negative connotation. It's seen as propaganda for Israel. I'm here to tell you that that's not what I'm doing. I am doing something far different and far more important. I am giving a human face to Jews in Israel. It's important because so often we're pawns on a chessboard in the same way the Palestinians are in the absolute same way. So it's funny because someone made a comment, someone made a statement about, um, uh, what were they talking about? They were talking they were, Basically what they were saying is that we need to do things for the Palestinians because left to their own devices. And that's not true that they can't take care of themselves. That's not true. I'm, I'm listen to what I have to say, please. I met a multitude of wonderful, beautiful Palestinian people when I was at Ben Gurion University who attended the university, by the way. Awesome. Amazing. Um, and these were bright, intelligent, beautiful people. Okay. That same concept up here in government or whatever, policymaking, holds the same view for us, holds the same view for people in Israel. I love this one. This is the one that I love. Jewish voters. She's reaching out to Jewish voters. He's reaching out to Jewish voters as if we're a mindless group that just goes and votes. No, we're people with lives, with hopes, with dreams, with ambitions, with uh, concepts and ideas that don't necessarily align with everyone, yet they do. Do you understand what I mean? What I mean by that is I may not want to get to point X in the way that you want me to, but I still want to get there. Um, and that's the human condition. That's what's so great. That's why if you look at ancient, uh, what is it? Ancient structures and stuff like that. If you, that, that's, that's why cities in, well, no, not, you don't even have to go ancient. You can go closer. That's why cities and architecture in Germany don't look like cities and architecture in Italy, which don't look like cities and architecture in Romania or China or anything. We all want the same thing. We all want a roof over our head. We just don't build it the same way. Wow. Deep, intense. Um, yeah. So. My whole mission is just basically to give and put a human face on, on my people. Okay. And my people are, are the, are Jews and my people are Israelis. Um, and it's important to me and I need a sip of coffee because I feel very <laughs> exposed right now. Hold on. So yeah, um, it's terrifying. I don't, I, I think it's an important mission. I think it's an important, and I don't mean it in the, in the, in the mission military sense. I mean it in the sense of my path. Derek Shilly, um, Hebrew, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, my path. That's what I just said in Hebrew. So, um, my path is to show the world 
that my kids are the same as your kids, that my mom and dad are the same as your mom and dad, and that my table and my family sitting around that table is just as important to me as yours is to you. It's funny. I'm going to totally date myself. But there was this Sting song. It was before the fall of the Soviet Union. And it was Russians. And it was like in Europe and America. Um, and it was basically the, the, the main lyric of the song was, do the Russians love their children too? And yes, they do. Absolutely. Um, and that is the most important thing. Do the Palestinians, yeah. Do the Syrians, yeah. Do um, the Brazilians, absolutely. The Chinese, who we vilify um, in the media, yeah. They love their kids and their families. And I'm here to show you that we're a part of that group there all right now how am i gonna do that now i need to segue out of that because i want to leave the intense um and i want to show you and tell you how i'm going to do that i'm going to do that by interviewing a bunch of israelis and a bunch of people well yeah a bunch of israelis uh, some of them are, you're going to go, wow, holy cow, that, they don't sound Israeli. Well, there you go. Um, so I'm on the road to crafting 24 interviews. I'm leaving in February. Um, I got the rest of the money. I got the rest of the money that I needed. Baruch Hashem. Um, my wife actually found it uh, somewhere and graciously presented it to me during Hanukkah. And there is no way I can thank her enough or let her know how much I appreciate it. I am blown away. But I have all the money I need. Oh, I can always use more money. Who am I kidding? Um, <laughs> but I got everything that I need plus more in order to uh, in order to complete the show in Israel and do my interviews. I am leaving and going to the C Executive Suites in Tel Aviv, right on the beach. I'm staying in the business suite. I'm setting up. Everything you see here, and it is going to be, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. And right now, I'm in the process of finishing up all of my scheduling. Yeah, I, I have this big, huge, um, big, huge grid graph, and it's got all my time slots, and I have... One, two, three, five slots a day. So if, if depending, I could be doing anywhere from three to five interviews a day. It's an hour and a half. I just got to drink a lot of coffee and make sure that I'm on point. I'm on my game. Some of the people, uh, some of the people were people that I, so I, uh, I had a group of people that I initially wanted more than anything, I did like a wish list, and got a bunch of them. Rivka Karmi, the uh, former president of Ben Gurion University. Whoa, she's a tremendous figure. Watch out for this person; she is going to be a dynamo in the coming years. She's she's just tremendous, and she's a great mind. She's also a medical doctor, not just a professor. Um, so, but I have, uh, I have her. I have Corey Gill Schuster. I don't know any any of you might know who he is. He's the guy who does the Ask a Palestinian, Ask an Israeli, and sometimes he's pulls the band aid right off. 
you know, even on the Israelis. So he's got a special place in my heart because I'm a person who values the truth above all. I'm a person who values, um, how do you really feel? And I, he, he's someone who feels the exact same way and the opportunity to pick his brain is just going to be wonderful. I also have, I, I've said this a number of times. I have Doron Almog, who is, I read an article about him years ago about leaving the IDF. He's a retired general. He was the general of the Southern Command. That's a big command. Uh, Moshe Dayan, the father of the IDF, he held the Southern Command for a number of years. So I've seen it. I've been there. Um, there's an awesome Boreka place. I can't wait to ask him about it. Um, but he left that in order to take care of his son who has special, had special needs. Bless him. And um, he's going to be sitting at my table. Wow. You're going to see. And that that takes, so there's this concept of the IDF. And, and this man dismantles that concept. His empathy, his caring, it, the, the work that he does now for the special needs, not just community, environment, everything. He's just, he's, he's a great guy. And I have, I'm going to, I'm going to show him to you, all of you. I'm going to show these people. I'm working on it still. Someone who's. It's funny because her and I don't always see politically the same, but her story is just tremendous. Stav Shafir, she's, uh, she was, when she was voted in, the youngest person ever voted into the Knesset. And she's just a firebrand. She holds people to the fire. The truth that Corey Gil Schuster goes after, Stav Shafir goes after. And I don't care what side you're on politically. That, that weighs more than any political party by far. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm so jazzed about that. The other two people that are coming on, hold on, are tremendous. These two people, they're not coming on together they're coming on separately. But, um, one of them is Shoshana Keats Jaskal. Um, I've been reading her blog for years and she wrote an article about her child and some medical issues that her child had and the, and the fear that she had, um, uh, as all of that was occurring. And it, her words in that article said exactly what I felt when my son went in for heart surgery. And I get to sit across from her and I get to show you her. I get to just, wow. And then I have another person from the Times of Israel, who's a hero of mine, Sarah Tuttle Singer, who, her story is amazing. She has two children. She made Aliyah with her husband, who then left and left her on her own with two children in a brand new country that she didn't speak the language. And she put that can do cap on and made a name for herself. She's, she's awesome. She's tremendous. I can't wait to have her on. Um, and a ton of people. I have a ton of wonderful people and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you beautiful people which makes everything that happened and everything I discussed in the beginning hurt even more. But the strength of the Maccabees. I need the strength of the Maccabees. All right, that's it. Um, oh, all right, thank you so much. 
for joining us for the 12 Cities in Israel podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our feed and become a part of the 12 Cities in Israel community. You can find this podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Spotify, and we'll be bringing you a brand new podcast every week, so keep your eyes out for that. Also, to help support this podcast, as I said in the beginning, you can become a patron by visiting our Patreon po- uh, our Patreon page at www.patreon.com forward slash 12 cities in Israel. Also, please visit our YouTube channel where you can see a video version of this podcast, plus other videos that we have produced, including our full length travel episode on the city of Beersheba in Southern Israel. While you're there, please don't forget to hit the, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You can also check us out on our website, www.12citiesinisrael.com on our Facebook page on Instagram, where I try to put something up every day and on our Twitter page where I'm always tweeting. Tweet. Um, that was really super duper corny. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Todo va. Le ve. Yeah.